I had to take tennis lessons for, you know, three times a week for several weeks. They were my least favorite days of the week. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. And appropriately so, because Miss Orsine taught herself. She took lessons so she could teach, so she could teach her daughters. So yeah, I, I, I had to take, I had to take lessons and they really were trying their best to get me to approach Miss Orsine's uh, tennis genius. And I was just like, look, y'all, I am an actor. You hired an actor. Where's my, where's my double? Like, <laughs> where is she? You know where's I'm my saying? double? Please where's come in, come in. <laughs> It's so good to see your face. I wish I was seeing it in real life and hugging you. I, I know, I know. I love your jacket. I love like, I love your trees you got outside. I'm excited to be seeing you. I'm, I, I, I listen, Anjanu, I know I never get a chance because every time we see each other, it's either at an event or we're actually working. So we don't get the opportunity to just uh, have the moment to sing praises. But I just, everything you do, sis, is just, just amazing from the Clark sisters to now King Richard. And we've gotten to do this twice together. Uh, not the variety actors on actors, but sharing the screen together. It hit me um, this morning, um, and I, I, cause I've been thinking about, you know, obviously, you know, Beale Street, but I was like, that's not the first time I've worked with her. And I, and I just completely, I, I, I just totally, completely spaced out on Ray because it was so long ago and, yeah. and so many things have happened in both of our lives since then. The thing that's really interesting about those roles that we played in both of those films mm -hmm. is that we were adversaries in both of those films. True. And, True. and that's something that is, is so interesting because you and I both, I feel like we're very similar as far as how we regard our art form and how much we respect others that regard our art form the same way that the roles that we've played have been two people that couldn't be more different than each other when in real life we're, we're, we have so many similarities. I just thought that right. was interesting. When in, in doing Ray, just thinking, <laughs> that, um, you know, because we, we were going at it, right? We were going at it. And, I, you know, I tried to sidle up to you a couple of times, like, just to be like, you know, trying to chat. And I wasn't having it. <laughs> I was giving you method, method actor. Honey, honey. <laughs> But what was so great about it, what was so great about it, as soon as the day were, was over, you like, hey, hey, what's up, you know? And I was just like, oh, she was focused. She was focused. That's what she was doing. Because of course my little feelings was all like, oh, she don't like me for real. Oh my, you know? oh wow. Yeah. Isn't that funny? My education so far as doing this thing that, you know, is acting and what we do. My education has come from being on set. I went to school, but really I learned, I, I, I got better at, I learned it as what I am right now, you know, as best I can uh, be. I learned that from you, people like you, you know, mm. watching you doing, doing that. And that has stayed with me forever, Regina. It has stayed with me. But do you find that even though we've been doing this for years, 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 
that you still feel like you're picking up things and learning still to this day? I cannot tell you, you know, it, I had I had to I had to fall on my face. I had to learn in a public way. You know, I wish that I had could say that, you know, I had the incubation. I, I went to graduate school. I went to acting school. But, you know, it just it just didn't prepare me for being in a scene with Regina King. You know, it just it just didn't. I'm sorry. I don't you know, it just didn't do that. You know what I mean? I had to be in a scene with Regina King to learn how to be in a scene with someone who is as as great, as focused as Regina King. I had to do it. Wow, it's so funny because I never would have thought of that. Yes, never. yes, yes. I was scared to, you know, I was scared to death. I was scared to death that there's no other way to, no other way to say it, you know, being there and you and with Jamie and it was another kind of experience from what I had ever had before, you know? It was Taylor Hackford. It was the story of Ray Charles. It was the first time I had to study music as well as an era. It was that wonderful challenge that you get as an actor when you're taking on a new role. But this one in particular just had so many more layers to it. And you know, when the audition had come up for that, they'd ask me about uh, which role that I want to audition for, for the role that Carrie played or the role that I played. And I just felt like I don't need to play the wife. Done that, it did, mm -hmm. had done that uh, quite a few times. So the fact that I had ask to audition for that particular role. And so now here I am in it, because you know how it is. It's one job is to get the job. And then the part two of the job is to actually execute once you have it. Exactly. Are we a team? Are we a team? We, we're a family. So we're a team. We're a family, the best and kind of team You don't think that that was a decision that you should have discussed with me? I'm wondering, like with you, you know, you, you, when King Richard, you played some, a real person and with playing Oracine, did you, did you have any of those trepidations going into it? I felt like I had so much to do that I didn't have time to be scared. Mm. Does that make, does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. You know, where it's just like. I, I, I was the whole through the whole time I was completely lacking of emotion. Just all I wanted was to show up, have the words right, and you know, and get through the day. Because someone has asked me, you know, was it emotional for you playing the world? And I said, No, it wasn't emotional for me because if it's emotional, then I'm playing the result. I don't have the privilege of feeling Miss Oris, what Miss Orisine went through because I didn't go through what Miss Orisine went through. All I can do is play the, is try my best to show the, the hammers and nails and, and the canvas of what it took to, for her to get where she, where she is, you know, remove the veil a little bit behind that. So when you're in the process of that, you don't have time to be, uh, what I got to be emotional about, you know? You know what I mean? So I didn't, I really, I really didn't have time to, to think about it. And I'm thankful for that because I think if I had gone into that headspace, if I had done that, I would be playing the result of something rather than playing the process of something, you know? And if I had done that, I, I, I it would have brought me off focus and, I, you know, made me just be worse. I actually want to handcuff that, th that, the saying, you know, playing the, uh, instead of playing the process, uh, you can get caught up in playing the result, which, yes. you know, makes it not an active performance. That's part of being an actor and present and being active in the performance is remaining present in the moment. You know, like what, 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 what's, what's happening in the, during the process in this particular moment? Because Mrs. Orsine doesn't know what's about to happen on Tuesday. Because right now is Saturday. So I, I wanted to ask you if you, if you wouldn't mind indulging me, and 
talk about these three specific roles that you play okay. and how whatever technique is for you, whatever your method is, like how that played into into each of them. Do you mind if, if you mind? No, if you not at all. And I want to say this about your performance in Jerry Maguire first. What I saw in you in that performance, I saw a clarity and a confidence in character. Now, here's the thing. For me, I see confident actors all the time but I don't necessarily see a confidence in character. Wow, um, th thank you, first of all. Like, it's, you're taking me back to a long time ago. I can't believe it's been 25 years since that film. For me, it was the Car Marcy Tidwell that I was playing was so clear on the page, the way I interpreted her was this woman that I felt like I wish I had her confidence. I wish I had her, you know, assuredness. You know, she was, it, it, the, the way um, I received her was for, like you hear that saying, um, the woman behind the man, the woman is the backbone. When I read that role, uh, that 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 script, I felt like that it really truly was on the page. I was like, that is the the force behind it all. That's who she is. One, and then two, I hadn't real. I'm not saying that it didn't exist, but I hadn't really until that. Uh, role felt like I had seen a black couple on TV or in the films that were d together and they were fun and then they seemed like that's the couple that if anyone knows Marcy and Rod they're inviting them to the party and that's what they felt like to me and uh, Cuba and I we had worked together on Boys in the Hoods I had auditioned with him several times, so we had already kind of had a connection, and he received the couple Tidwells the same way. Mm -hmm. And so there were, so I, I think just both of us having that understanding, I, we just came to work with knowing that for us, they were the hero couple. Yes. And they were the, the glue and yeah. and just having that in my mind my aunt and uncle my aunt Juanita and uncle Willie are kind of that couple in real life mm -hmm. and I usually any role that I play I try to find a blueprint a real life person that I'm or people that I'm studying <laughs> kind of hijacking <laughs> <laughs> personality traits you know compare the experience of doing that, playing Marcy, with Trudy in The Heart of They Fall. Oh. <laughs> Bass. Trudy. If I'd known you were switching sides, I'd have asked you to come join us. Well, first of all, I don't have a technique. I don't know if you have te technique. The only thing that I can say that I do that is the same with every role is building a backstory. But I don't have a specific technique. Do you? No, I don't. But see, this is why this is why I, this is why I said this is because I think I I am the most uninformed actor there is. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? They could throw Stanislavski. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Me neither. Thank you. No disrespect. <laughs> I'm a little dumb like that, you know? Yeah. But I do think when I so when I say when I say technique, I go, okay, for me, technique is just what it takes to do what I'm trying to do. That can be like, you know, studying the words, that can be like the music I listen to, that can be like, okay, uh, I can't talk to nobody before I go to you know, whatever that is. So that's 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 what I that's how I that's how I see it. 
the week that I knew it, I knew it. We subscribe to the same thing, sis. We do, we do, we do. Cause I'm, I'm the same exact way. Like, and I mean with Trudy, I was just so happy to just have fun. I decided to have a dialect, you know, going into it, James Samuels, the writer, producer, director, composer, like what doesn't this man do? I asked, you know, did we have to have a dialect? And he said, no. And I said, well, I do want to play with something. And he said, sure, what? And I had just been shooting one night in Miami in New Orleans for three months. So I just had this thing in my head where, do you remember um, Benicio Del Toro in Usual Suspects? And he had this yeah. dialect or accent that you didn't really, like, where the hell is he from? It was just really weird. So that's always stuck with me. And so I felt like I want Trudy to be that because James has said that, she, that, that you know, they are all nomads, that they travel to get to where they are in the moment that we meet all of the characters. So I said, one of the things that I love about a lot of people who've lived different places, you can't quite finger where they're from. Mm -hmm. So that was something that I played with, like giving her a little bit of the New Orleans that I'd been listening to for those few months, a little bit of Caribbean, um, a little bit of Southern, I just kind of wanted it all to be like, where the heck is she from? And the wardrobe was something that helped very much in forming how I would play her. I really got involved with the wardrobe and the hair and the I things love that the I wanted. Hair. Yeah, did, the hair. did you like all of this? Yeah, all of this. Yeah, a Roxy Lindsay and the hat. It was, it was, it, it was, was, it was, it was just, oh, it was just fun. It was yeah. fun. It yeah. was fun, but you know, it was tough because it was during COVID and, and you guys as well on King Richard, did, did you guys have a time where you had to break because of COVID or stop, start back, any of that? Well, when we stopped in March of 2020, I just thought that, you know, that was going to be the end of it. You know, I didn't mm. think we were going to, I didn't think we were going to come back at all. Um, so I had let it go. I had let it go. I went back home and, and they kept saying, oh, we're going to go back to, and, and I was just like, okay, cool. Cause I didn't believe it. And so I really didn't think about it for, you know, those months. I really didn't think about it, but I think because the, those couple months that we did shoot and we had like a really intense rehearsal period that, you know, I, Will uses the word marinate and I think that's a, a proper word for it, that it just, it gave it time to just really get in my bones and get in my cells. Mm. So when we did come back, I was a lot, probably a lot more relaxed than I was, mm. than I was before. So that kitchen scene, Mm -hmm. that, that tennis match between Richard and Orsine. <laughs> right. What, did, what, did that happen before or after the break? It happened after. It happened mm -hmm. after. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I think so, you know, to your question that maybe that scene wouldn't have been like that as lived in if, if it happened before. And I think one of the, part of the reason though is that we were still writing. You know, Zach Balin, our writer, and Will, and everybody, we were just still trying to trying to hammer these words to where we wanted them to be, and it wasn't it wasn't there before we before we stopped shooting. Wow. And before we stopped shooting, you know, Zach went in um, and worked on it some more, and then we sort of you know came in with our our ideas. We were working on that scene really on that morning. Wow. With Isha, you know, Miss Orsine's daughter. That is really interesting because, um, you know, normally you hear about writing still happening on a show. Mm -hmm. You don't usually hear that about that so much on a film. You know, sure mm -hmm. we get changes and new pages and everything, but mm -hmm. to that extent, you know, and, and those those are those moments like, you know, you don't really want to have to go on a break because of. Uh, pandemic, but um, that I guess did allow time for some of that writing to 
to happen. What was that process like? Like what made you sign on with knowing that the words weren't there, that it wasn't quite there yet? What about either the project? What was it that? Well, first of all, I, let me let me say that, you know, the 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 script was great from from jump. Zach had written a great script from jump. You know, you read things and you think like, yeah, this the, the idea of this is is good. I can see myself. I want to be in this. You know, but outside of an idea, you know, that's that's the only where that's the only place it works is an idea. You know, and and so you spend a whole lot of time. I know you have been there. You spend a whole lot of time sort of trying to negotiate and build and 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 hammer with someone with people who are everybody involved producers writers and everybody to get get it where that you can just present it to to anybody that you can just take it out in the world but that's not that wasn't the case with with king richard zach had written a really really great script period i think that you know when we started working though i think that what was revealed to everybody is that we could expand, particularly the women characters, the girls, and I think everybody wanted to do that. And so when we got in the room, we started hearing it, and, and I think everybody agreed that, you know, we can do better. We can do better. Um, but yeah, Zach had already written a really, you know, brilliant, you know, piece of work. When did I not believe? You're not the only dreamer in this family. Wouldn't be no dream if it wasn't for me. I carried them inside me and on my back. And I carried you too. I'm working two shifts so I could put food on your table. I think of you as, and I like I'm not throwing this around. I think of you, you are you are an icon. You are an, an mm -hmm. icon of American cinema at this point. And you're an icon of You are an icon of Black American cinema. So, I just think Thank you. that I wanted to hear a little bit more about your awareness of that, because that that can be that can feel like a hell of a response, a heck of a responsibility. Yeah. Whoo, girl. Um, well, thank you. For that, and I and thank you for making it specific, um, because Black America is very specific and very necessary for cultures across the world. Yes, you know I am so proud of that. I'm so proud of being a Black American, and I know that we call ourselves African American, but I'm a Black American. And, and, and I'm very, very clear about the history of being black in the country that I live in. And I am proud to be a black American, but it, it not but, the thing that is so beautiful about it is how different we all are. That mm -hmm. we are, and, and I don't mean this to be funny, but we are so colorful. We are so rich in s culture. We have mm -hmm. so much substance. And so often we allow that little box in our house or that big screen to tell us who we are and sure. what our experience are instead of actually um, feeling who we are. So it's finding a piece of Regina within every character that I play so that it is rooted in some type of truth. The word iconic, um, I, I'm, I'm, I've been hearing that more often in relation to myself and I am doing a better job of embracing that. If I'm gonna take the river down to icon to the harder they fall uh <laughs> i will say that the thing that about that film about that role 
that feels so iconic is because what James Samuel did with that story was take a genre that has been around forever and put people in it who actually were a part of the West and allow each character to have ownership of their own life. You here for your damsel in distress? Trudy Smith was, to me, um, iconic in the regard that here you have a woman in a space that's supposed to be, this is what we've been told, ruled by men, but she beats to the tune of her own drum, making moves uh, uh, in her own way that maybe you may not agree with it, and so, because she is seeing a bigger picture, a bigger picture for us all, right? And so when you call her a bad guy, she's one of the bad guys, it kind of put me in the place of, well, is she really? You know, at the end mm -hmm. of the day, she's doing things uh, because she sees the bigger picture, the possibility for black people. Um, just like, not to bring up usual suspects again, but Kaiser Soze was the bad guy. But by the end of that film, we were like, oh my God, to find out that it was Kevin Spacey and that he had devised this whole entire plan. I just feel like that there's just something that is so exciting about playing someone that my approach to it is not good or bad, it's necessary. And I guess the way I move is necessary. You know, I feel like it's necessary uh, for me to um, survive. That's, I, I'm, I'm moving the way the universe I'm, is speaking to me. But I do have something I wanna ask you. There's scenes in films that, you know, happen to be like my favorite scenes and they're not the ones always that are the ones that are most talked about, but it's the things that aren't said or that, that um, just small things. And there was a, this moment in King Richard where Orsine is training uh, Venus, because Venus is feeling left out of the whole thing because all of this focus is on Serena. And, the other and, way around, yes. Oh, Serena, yes, Serena, the baby. And I love it so much. How much studying did you have to do with the tennis? I had to take tennis lessons for, you know, three times a week for several weeks. They were my least favorite days of the week. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Uh, and yeah, they, I, I, you know, be, and, and appropriately so because Miss Orsine taught herself. She took lessons so she could teach her daughters. I had to take lessons and they really were trying their best to get me to approach Miss Orsine's tennis genius. And I was just like, look, y'all, I am an actor. You hired an actor. Where's my, where's my double? Like, where is she? You know where's I'm my saying? double? Please where's come in, come in. <laughs> I am not lying. Like I was just, I, I, I'm like, listen, she's Orsine Price for a reason. Like they are who they are for a reason because they're really good at what they do because they were trained well. I, that's not my journey, that, that's not my journey at all. Intense. That's so interesting. That's so interesting. Yeah. And I think that, that that goes to what I was saying, how you find a bit of you that I find a bit, I find me within the role. Mm -hmm. And I think that in, in that particular instant, for, because that's how your approach was to it, it really felt to me as, 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 a, a, as a, 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 a audience member that it just made 
uh, Richard and Oracine style just so different? That was one of those things that I that we were trying to when I when you're talking about the script, getting the script to where we wanted it to be. That was one of those things, you know, like trying to put as much of that information about Miss Oracine and that the reality of her relationship with Serena, the reality that she was an athlete, the reality that she was, you know, a a a a, t a tennis genius who imparted that athleticism and genius to her to her girls, and I think that's the process of that is where we work towards you know, ultimately at towards the end. But I get, okay, I'm gonna leave it on this right here with you. <laughs> so listen, okay, real quick. I saw this commercial uh, about how to make your lips smaller. And the, and the, so there was a, there was a non-white person applying makeup to a black woman. And the and the art the name of the article was how to make your lips smaller. So when I saw that, I real I said to myself, I said, okay, why would a black woman need to make her lips smaller? And it just reminded me of the fact it's still a place of 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 conflict. And so I feel as my job, when I get these roles or whatever I'm doing, I feel it's my job to protect that little girl who would see that article and think there's something wrong with my lips. Look, you you know well, we're we're the same age, so you know there there was not a us anywhere on TV or in 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 film. And I, I like I and I gotta say, and I'm gonna get a little emotional. This is one of the things that I loved about King Richard, is that I don't remember in my life of seeing a story where a father loved on his black daughters the way we get to see Richard Williams do in this film. And, you know, as I was watching it, I felt like I'm 50 years old and I can't think of a film where this has happened. King Richard will always have a special place in my heart and, and, and be a constant reminder of how much we don't get to see ourselves. You know, I've been thinking about this ever since, you know, when I when I was, you know, told about it, woke up this morning and I'm like, why can't I sleep? <laughs> it's like, oh, cause you gonna talk to Regina King today. That's why you can't sleep. I won't even begin to, you know, try to tell you, you know, how grateful I am to you, Regina. And, and you look pretty in your jacket. And <laughs> I'm like, where you get that? But yeah, I just, I, I thank you for today. I thank you for your career. I, I, I thank you. Did I? Thank you. Mm, appreciate you, sis.